Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Making sure we have audio. If you are listening in, come on in, come on in, and let me know where you are repping. I am repping all the way from Detroit, Motor City itself, all the way. Yes. Repping all. There we go hear the audio on the other side. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, everybody. My name is uh, Evangelist Bridget Jackson, and I am absolutely, absolutely uh, excited and um, grateful to be here with you today. So again, if you're listening in, if you're listening, uh, shout out where you're listening in from. I'm listening and reporting recording and coming to you live all the way from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, good morning. Good morning, my king. He said, good morning, queen. I said, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we are finishing up our series. Um, we're in week number three of our series, the five-week legacy series. We're talking about legacy as it relates to your biblical legacy. And today is going to be a very personal, personal um, time that we're going to have today. So whether you're watching in real time, you're watching in a replay, uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for coming in and supporting uh, the Early Riser Bible Study uh, that is being brought to you by Kingdom Influence Global Ministry and myself, again, Evangelist Bridget Jackson. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's go ahead and start with the word of prayer. Father, we thank you right now for your goodness, your kindness, and your mercy. We thank you, God, because you are God. Lord, we honor you, God, because you have given us, oh God, a new day. You've given us breath in our body. You've given us a new opportunity to serve you, God, to serve you, to worship you, to honor you with our life, with our time, our talent, and our treasure. Lord, we just praise you right now because you, oh God, are God and can't nobody do what you can do. Lord, we thank you for being the living one. We thank you, oh God, Lord, for being our guidance, our protector. We thank you right now, God, Lord, for being the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, we just praise you right now, God, because again, Somebody didn't make it in, but you allowed us to make it in, in this moment, in this second, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we just praise you. We glorify you. Lord, anybody coming in even with illness, sickness, any type of diverse diseases, Lord, we praise you right now for your healing virtue. Lord, those that are dealing and struggling with the mental emotional issues. God, Lord, we thank you right now for your strength and your guidance. Those that are going through, oh God, on their jobs or even in their business. God, Lord, we thank you right now for covering with your blood and keeping and leading and guiding in the majestic name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Again, uh, we are so very excited to be here today. Today, we're talking about obstacles to the promise. Obstacles to the promise. Who, what obstacles are standing in the way between you and the promise that God has declared over your life? Let's talk about it. Amen. We're going to start out with Isaiah 54, 16 to 17, one of my favorite scriptures that I love to quote. We're going to do it in the NIV version. And it says, see, it is I who created the blacksmith who fans the coals into flames and forges a weapon fit for its work. And it is I who have created the destroyer to wreak havoc. So this is God talking, right? And he's saying, I created everything. But here's verse 17. No weapon forged against you will prevail and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. I don't care what all is happening on around us. God said in his word, no weapon will be able to prevail. 
no weapon. No weapon will be able to prevail. Amen. We have to get that in our spirits. And I'm going to go into more, but just wanting you to know, let me, let me, let me come a little closer. You know, I know I love to come closer when I get intimate with everybody. Today was a challenge to get on the call. I woke up this morning at 3 a.m. As I typically do. But for this week, it's been very emotional, very emotional. And this is my favorite scripture. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I have to tell myself that over and over and over again. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it looks like. God said, I created the blacksmith who makes the coals and fans the flames and does all of that. I'm the creator of the destroyer that seeks to wreak havoc. In other words, he created the enemy. Remember, Satan was one of God's angels, a fallen angel now, because he decided he wanted a whole nother motive. He is the destroyer. The scripture says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's the word. That's the word of God. But God came that you might have life and you have it more abundantly. So again, I'll be honest with you, about 4.30, I was kind of like, maybe I won't go live today. And I said, absolutely not. And I cried some more. And I dried the tears up and said, let me get in here. Because when I'm preaching, I'm not just preaching and teaching to you all. I'm doing it for myself too as well. Amen. God is just absolutely, absolutely wonderful. So let's get into this. So obstacles. As I'm talking about obstacles here in the context of this Bible study, of this lesson, of this word that's coming forth, this powerful word that God has given for me to impart, to go forth. I'm talking about the spiritual assignments that's sent to attack you and stop you from getting to the promise. I just told you my personal testimony. The enemy didn't want me to declare today. But how many of you all know the enemy is a liar and a deceiver too? God is not through blessing us. God is not through blessing us. Amen. God is not through blessing us. And as long as God is not through blessing us, there's a promise on the other end. As long as we have breath in our body, there's a promise on the other end. But in between, just like you see this image on the screen, you see this image of this broken bridge. Nothing can travel across that bridge. It's separated. And sometimes obstacles will come to try to break your bridge between your current situation and your destiny. But can I tell you, no obstacles will prevail. None will. This might look like an impossible task to get from one side to the other side. But as sure as my name is Bridget, as sure as God's word is true. God's word is true. He will perform that what he said he will perform. He will perform that which he said he will perform. And the assignments that come to attack us is to discourage us. But just like God said, I created the blacksmith. God knew what he did in his infamous wisdom. He knows that he is. He is. Who glory to your name, God. He's sovereign. He's all knowing. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, I will, I will teach you things that you don't know about. That's my paraphrase. Okay. So when I'm talking about obstacles, I'm talking about the spiritual assignments that are signed to come against you. Let's talk about what those spiritual assignments are. Today in the lesson, we're going to talk about how a lineage was tried to stop. Be stopped by the obstacle of pridefulness. Salvation was tried to stop, get stopped by premature death. Mm -hmm. Trying to abort the promise. And leadership was tried to stop by the obstacle of rejection. 
let's get into the three stories. Esther, we're going to start off with Esther and we're starting in the message Bible, the third chapter of Esther we have here in the word of God, it says when Haman saw for himself that Mordecai didn't bow down and kneel before him, he was outraged. Okay, we're talking about who Haman, he was outraged because Mordecai didn't, says meanwhile, having learned that Mordecai was a Jew, Haman hated to waste his fury on just one person. How many of you all know people like that, that they're so angry that they're not even angry at the person that they think they should be angry at. They want to take it out on everybody. And here was Haman. He said, I'm not even going to come after Mordecai, but all Jews throughout the whole kingdom of Xerxes. Yep. I'm going to take it out on everybody. Mm -hmm. He did this to me. That's so I think. But what was he standing in? He was standing in a spirit of pride. It says later King, the king demanded a second bevy of beautiful girls. So I'm going to give you some backdrop of the story. But that and Mordecai had become a government official. So Mordecai, again, was a Jew. They were in captivity. But now he has become an official. He's been elevated to a position. Here we have Esther, which is his cousin, but he raised her like a niece, right? So Esther still hadn't had anyone, uh, hadn't told anyone rather that she was a Jewish. So Esther now is the queen, right? For she was still following Mordecai's orders. Mordecai had ordered her not to tell that she was a Jew. So the king marries her and falls in love with her. And at the beginning part, it says this bevy of beautiful girls, everybody thought uh, Esther was just beautiful. And it wasn't even about her beauty on the outside, but Esther was beauty on the inside too. She was both. So it says one day as Mordecai was on duty at the palace, two king's eunuchs, okay, they saw him. Uh, uh, they, he saw the two king's eunuchs and they had decided that they were going to plot to kill the king. And that's what they did. Let's pick it back up. Verse 22, it says, Mordecai heard about it and passed on the information to the queen Esther. And she told the king and credited Mordecai with the information. So the, the, he stopped the king from being assassinated because his cousin niece is in a position of authority. She's the queen. She gets in the king's ear and says, wait a minute, these men were going to kill you. And they investigated it and they found the men guilty. All right. And so that was recorded, right? But you know, sometimes people forget. How many of you all know people forget? So they forgot about it. They, they forgot that, to, that Mordecai did it. They forgot all about it. So here's some time passed. We're in the third chapter of Esther now. And it says, and soon after King Xerxes appointed Haman, the son of Hamadetha, the aggregate, a prime minister. So now Haman is, he is elevated into a position, okay? He was the most powerful official in the empire next to the king himself. Now all the king's officials bowed down before him in deep reverence whenever he passed by, for so the king had commanded. So this was a commandment to do, but Mordecai refused to do it. And it had nothing to do with him not honoring and reverencing. It had a lot to do with, again, his, his uh, faith and belief in God. So verse three and four says, why are you disobeying the king's commandments? The other command demanded day after day, but he still refused. Finally, we're talking about Mordecai. Finally, they spoke to Haman about it to see whether Mordecai could get away with it because of his being a Jew which was the excuse he had given them. So because he was a Jew, he was like, uh-uh, I can't do this because this don't this goes against what I believe in because they were trying to make Haman almost as if he was a God. And so Haman became furious and he decided not to leave Mordecai alone, going back to our signature scripture, but he was moved against all of Mordecai's people. Remember we talked last week about choices. Sometimes our choices affect our lineage. And this is what's happening. Mordecai decided to stand. And this time he's standing on a good principle, not a bad or poor choice, but he's standing on a good principle. And he decided, uh, I got to stand on this. So then now Haman wants to come after him. But how many of y'all know, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Let's see what happened with Esther and Mordecai. 
In the seventh chapter of Esther, the Message Bible records, Harbona, one of the eunuchs attending the king, spoke up. Look over there. There's the gallows that Haman had built for Mordecai, who saved the king's life. It's right next to Haman's house, 75 feet high. He didn't build this gallow that he going to hang Haman. I mean, Haman's going to hang Mordecai on. So he thought. But see, here's what happened. Remember when Mordecai saved the king and it went unnoticed? Well, it came back up and the king was like, wait a minute. I have not done anything great for the person that saved my life. So he whispers into Amos' ear and he said, Haman, what should I do to a person that does da, 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 da? And Haman was so prideful, he thought that the king was talking about him. Oh, yes, you should do this. And yes, you should do that. Oh, you should elevate him, king. And then he had the nerves to get into Esther's ears, not knowing that Esther was a Jew and that Mordecai was her family. Listen, God will position you even amongst your enemies. Do you hear me? Even amongst your enemies, he will elevate you. And so Haman was hanged. Wait a minute. Let me let me go back because who said it? The king said, hang him on it. When he found out that Haman was trying, built the gallows to kill Mordecai, the one who had tried to save the king's life. Whoo we come on y'all. And so the king put him on the gallows, hanged him. And it says, and the king's hot anger cooled because he was mad about it, right? Our God gets mad about some things. And I just need you to know, that he is ever present. He is ever present. Amen. First Corinthians, I mean, second Corinthians 10 and three through five says, and though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. I want somebody to somebody to realize that we are not warring after the flesh. What was going on today with me had nothing to do with Bridget in the flesh. It was a spiritual battle. And I had a choice, just like we taught last week. So if you missed last week's Bible study, listen, go over to the YouTube channel and find it. I'll drop it in this link if where you're watching too as well. But I want you to go back and find it and listen to it. We're talking about the choices. And so I made a choice. I made a choice this morning to get it together. And when I say this morning was, let me, let me come a little bit closer, y'all. This morning was horrible. Since my son's passing. I've probably had three days like this morning. And this morning probably is number the the second out of the three. That's how bad it was this morning. But again, I had a choice. I had a choice to say, woman of God, get yourself together. I had a choice to cancel this today or to come in here today. I had a choice and I chose to understand and to know the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And those strongholds most of the time are not outside forces. It is us. Say it. Somebody say it with me. Me, myself, and I. Wait a minute. Let me do it. I'm going to talk on myself. Me, myself, and I. Uh Uh-huh. That was the issue this morning. Me, myself, and I. The issue wasn't, it was me, myself, and I. Now, was it influenced and brought on by a spiritual force? Absolutely. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy and wants to do it. Amen? But he can't. All right, let's get here. Let's get here. Let's get here. We got two more stories really quick. We got 10 minutes. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to him, Returned to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. We're talking now in Matthew 2 and 12 through 14. Remember, I told you at the beginning, we were going to talk about obstacles, the lineage obstacle, the salvation obstacle. Now we have the salvation obstacle. The backdrop of this story is you're talking about uh, um, the, the wise men that came and they were warned in a dream. Don't go back to Herod. Because they had passed by here and here it was like, wait a minute, where y'all going? He was like, we're going to, we're going to honor the king. We're going to worship the king. And he was like, oh, come back and tell me. He didn't want to know. What he wanted to know that is not so he could go worship, like he said. He lied. He wanted to destroy. At the time, there was a decree to destroy male children under the age of two. Why? Because he wanted to try to destroy 
Jesus. Amen. It says, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, arise and take the child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there in the word for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Mm -hmm. So the spirit was a spirit of assassination. The spirit was a spirit of, again, aborting, aborting the promise. And it says, when he arose, he took the young child and his mother in the night. So Joseph listened. Listen to God, to the spirit of God, because again, it wasn't about just them. It was about something deeper. So let's look at Jesus. John, the 10th chapter in the Amplified Bible says, for this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life, my own life, so that I may take it back. Verse 18 is the key point I want you to hear here. Herod couldn't take his life. It says, because no one takes it away from me, but I lay it down voluntarily. When he was on that cross, and I don't have time to get into it today, it was a voluntary death. He gave up the ghost because couldn't nobody or nothing take it, but there were forces trying to do it. So before he became a stoop in the ministry, when he was just a baby, when he was just a baby, here come Herod with a spirit of assassination. Here comes Herod with a murdering spirit, like Haman, a murdering spirit to try to take the promise away. And this one include life, not just the promise of what happened, but life. But somebody say, but God, but God, but God, amen. Now, the last story I told you leadership. We're going to talk about Samuel, all right? It says, there was once a man who lived in Ramathoth. He was descended from the old Zup family in Ephraim Hills, and his name was Elkanah. And he was connected to the Zups from Ephraim through the father, Jeroham, his grandfather, Elihu, and his great-grandfather, Tibu. He had two wives, all right? See, that's some problems, but we ain't going to get into that. But he had two wives. The first wife was Hannah, and the second wife was Penina. And Penina had children. Hannah did not. Oh, we. Some of us. That gap. You see that gap in between that bridge there? Mm -hmm. That obstacle is a barrenness. Now, it might be physical barrenness. It could be implications of some type of barrenness. Mm -mm. I just need you to be encouraged. I just need you to be encouraged. First Samuel 1 and 6 through 8 in the Living Bible. It says, Penina made matters worse by taunting Hannah because they would go up and they would, they would go up annually and they would praise God and with their husband, Elkanah. And Penina would taunt Hannah because she was barren. And we have to understand and realize, especially during these times, bearing a male child was a, was 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 like gold. OK, every year it was the same. So every year, Penina scoffed at her. He laughed at her. She laughed at her as they went to Shiloh and they went to Shiloh to worship God, making her cry so much she couldn't eat. She couldn't eat. She was vexed. She couldn't eat. What's the matter, Hannah? Elkanah said, uh, asked her, why aren't you eating? Why make such a fuss over having no children? Isn't having me better than 10 sons? Because he loved her. And he was like, isn't it better than having 10 sons? And to her, she's like, no, I want my promise. I want my birth. I don't want to be barren. Barrenness is an obstacle right now. And what I want to see God happen. Let's 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 see what, what, what God did. Let me tell y'all about what God did. God gave her a son. First Samuel 2 and 20 through 21. It says, Eli, who was Samuel's mentor, blessed Elkanah and his wife, saying, May the Lord give you children by this woman to take the place of the one she prayed for and gave the total Lord. So Hannah prayed and asked for God to give her a son. She says, if you give me a son, I'm going to give him back to you. And so not only did she do that, she gave up her son and he didn't live with them. He was raised by uh, Eli, who showed him how to, again, just have a relationship with the Lord. So God gave Hannah more children even. But let's jump down to Samuel 
1 Samuel, the seventh chapter, it says, now Samuel judged all the days of his life. He judged Israel. He was a leader. He used to go annually to the circuit, to Bethel, Gilgal, Mizpah, and he judged Israel in all these places. So he's the one who, who, who found Saul because they just had to have a king. He's the one who anointed David. And again, he judged Israel. So the obstacle, what was after Samuel? What was after Samuel? What was after Samuel? Rejection. If Hannah had allowed that rejection to stop her, we wouldn't have one of the greatest judges, one of the greatest leaders to be able to talk about. Now, all of these stories, God is using other people, but I want you to put yourself in there. I want you to see that bridge that's broken. But I also want you to understand and know that that bridge is still passable. In the supernatural, God can still get something from one side of that bridge to the other side of that bridge. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon against you shall prosper. I just need you to hear that. I just need you to hear that. No weapon. You see it? It's bigger for you. No weapon. It says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And this is their vindication from me. I don't care how the enemy has been wreaking havoc. No weapon formed against. It couldn't stop. It couldn't stop uh, Mordecai and Esther from being able to, again, save their lineage. It couldn't stop the enemy from Jesus going on that cross in his full time to be the savior and the redeemer for us. No weapon could stop Hannah from conceiving Samuel to be a great leader in the nation of Israel. No weapon, nothing, nothing. A Jezebel couldn't stop an Elijah. A Goliath could not stop a David. And it wasn't even just Goliath. The biggest thing, <coughs> I was just telling somebody this the other day. David's own son turned against him. And he had to flee for his life. Sometimes the people closest to you can hurt you the most. But no weapon. I just need you to realize that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon, none whatsoever. God is just absolutely amazing. <clears throat> As I told you, today was a hard day. There's a lot of battles that I'm fighting on the other side that publicly I can't even talk about. But God is God. But God is God. And so one of the things I'm doing, and y'all see this? I got this hat on on purpose today. I could have had my hair combed to be in here. But I put this on purpose. I've been wearing this hat all week because I have to remind myself, my king bought this hat for me. Faith, 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 faith. I need you to have faith. Let me, let me go back to, to this. So y'all can see that picture. Let me go make it bigger. You see that bridge? It's broken. But that does not mean it's an obstacle. I need you to understand. Faith. 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 I need you to faith it. I need you to faith it. And I'm talking to myself too. I need to faith it. If God said it, that established it. There's no obstacles that can stop your promise. None, none. And so those of you that know me, you know what I'm going through right now. I just lost my son six months ago. It hasn't been a year. And so anybody that know the grief process, I'm still at the beginning of the grief process. But I continue to say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It's the biggest trial I've had, ever had to go through in my life. It's the worst pain 
And again, if you knew the backdrop of all the story and I don't have time to go into it today, then you would understand even more. But no weapon, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. So you know what I decided to do? Gather some other parents together and we are, excuse me, we are, we have authored a book out of order. And it's a book of encouragement. It seems out of order when you lose a child. It seems absolutely out of order. But God is sovereign and God will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. God can provide hope. And so I'm just asking today, if you find it in your heart, if you would scan that and either purchase it yourself and uh, keep it if you are one of those people or buy a one, scan it, <clears throat> or you can go to Cash App, dollar sign, My Kingdom Influence, and put in 000 or OOO is really what it stands for, but uh, out of order, OOO, and type in OOO. And I will know that you want to gift that to a grieving parent. And we will make sure that that book is earmarked for gifting to someone else. Uh, if you want to know more information, you can DM me, reach out to me um, <clears throat> again through uh, Bridget Brown Jackson, uh, dot com. Bridget Brown Jackson dot com is my website. Uh, that's a way that you can reach me. And again, we just want to be a blessing to other people that are going through. So no matter what, the enemy is not going to stop my mouth. The enemy is not going to stop my mouth. Now, this hurts. I tell you all this all the time. This absolutely, absolutely hurts. But God is just absolutely, absolutely amazing. Amen. So in the in the, the comment section, when we uh, broadcast that we were going to have this, we said, what did Jesus, Esther, and Hannah have in common? They had to overcome obstacles in their life to gain the legacy that we read about in scriptures. We're doing the legacy series. So what is that legacy that you have that the enemy is trying to come in like a flood? <laughs> but guess what? The rest of that says, but the Lord will lift up a standard. In other words, you're not going to drown. You can't be quenched. The fiery darts will not take you, right? Heaven's blueprint is already declared your victory. Everything is already written. It was already written that Esther and Mordecai was going to come through. It was already written that Jesus was going to come through. It was already written that Hannah wasn't going to be barren and she was going to bear a great leader. It was already written that, again, Elijah was not going to be uh, beheaded and killed by Jezebel. No, it was the opposite way. She was killed. And the dogs and stuff ate up her body so much that she wasn't even recognizable. So I just need you to realize whatever that enemy is that comes after you, it has no power and no authority. No weapon formed against the show prosper. None. And so for right now, the enemy that tried to come after me was for me to be grieving and grieving and grieving over my son. Now, there is a grief poem and there is mourning. But there's also hope that comes with this, that other people, because this pain I feel, I've had loss. I've lost two of my siblings before they turned 30. I lost my dad. I've lost all of my grandparents. I've lost so many aunts and uncles. I can't even count them all because uh, I had a lot of aunts and uncles. And uh, natural, not, not married, natural birth. And in all of that, friends, I've lost. Nothing felt like this. And so I wanted to make sure that God allowed me to author this book with other parents that are going through. So again, if you'd like to be a blessing to that, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't wasn't watching the clock. I am over time. I'm over time. But I just wanted to share that with you. Wanted to share that with you. So God bless you. Thank you so much. And again, uh, we, we just want to look out for other people. Amen. You're also welcome to just gift uh, 
a donation to the ministry at K-I-G-M, if you put that in the subject box of your cash app. And it is my kingdom influence because kingdom influence is by somebody else. My kingdom influence, even though the name of uh, the ministry is kingdom influence, put my kingdom influence if you'd like to give a donation to the ministry. Um, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And again, that goes to, to doing different things for people. In fact, uh, the last donations that people sent in was able to help actually a grieving mother that then lost her husband uh, just recently. So your gifts, your donations are helping those people that are uh, just going through. All right. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. Thank you so much for being here today. Lord, we just ask that you would cover with your blood. Allow your people to be blessed beyond measure in the mighty name of Jesus. Find their homes uh, favorable, God. Find their jobs favorable. Find their businesses favorable in the matchless and wonderful name of Jesus. God bless you. Come back again. We're doing this legacy series. We're doing this legacy series and we hope this was a blessing to you. If you missed any of the other ones, please go to our YouTube channel. Please go to our YouTube channel and uh, find that and follow us, like, and subscribe. Share it with other people. I've seen today some people were sharing with other people. Thank you so much for doing that. We wish you uh, continued, continued blessings. I don't wish. We pray for you. Continue, continued blessings as you endeavor to walk out your legacy and the promises that God has promised you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. God bless you.